doing the somewhat easy but painful job of the upper control arm on a W164 ML63. So on a 63 or even like a 550 or 500 of this era with the air suspension, there's a 10 millimeter bolt and there's a 10 millimeter nut on top. So you need to get at that with a wrench. I used the impact, took it off quick, let it sit down. Um, you need to remove this nut. There's a T45 Torx in the center. This is a 20 millimeter. I can't find my 20 wrench, so I'm going to do a 21. Hopefully not strip it. I have two 5 ace uh, ratcheting wrenches. One goes on the inside bolt there. And that's the other side, but anyways, the inside, that bolt there, one wrench goes on there. And then you come to the top side, and you can see the nut there, which is right there. There's one. The second one is a pain in the butt, obviously. It's right here on the back side. You can't really see it or feel it, but it's right here on the other side of the tower. So, I'm going to do that thanks to Rock Auto. There's our control arm. Nevo Tech Supreme. I'm sure it'll be fine. My truck's steering wheel is just slightly off to the left, and it bothers me very much. So I'm going to take it for an alignment. Hope that's it. The front sway bar bushings are smoked on this thing. So I'm going to do those before I go and hope for the best. Just so everyone can see what I have going on. I have the T45 in the ball joint to hold it, and then I am just loosening it with the wrench. Obviously that wouldn't happen with two hands, but we're working on it. It's really not bad. It's got some fluid leaking out of it, so to speak, or grease. Um, and it's a little dry rotted. I know it's hard to see. So this has a lot of tension on it. I did not do anything with the air suspension as far as letting it deflate or whatever. I just disconnected the sensor, opened the door, and the truck usually drops its butt on the other side for me. And then when I put the wheel on it, it's on the ground and just turn it on and it pumps back up. So shouldn't have any problems with that. All right, so the nut is off. As you can see, it's not moving. You're gonna have to hit it with a hammer. So I have my trusty hammer. I also have a pry bar, it's a small one. But when you go to put the new one back on, I'm probably gonna need it to pry to get it to go on properly. Open the new control arm to make sure it's correct. Everything looks good. It has the hole in it for the air ride level sensor. So, all right, I'll get to beat in this thing. Once I beat this, that's what she said, this will come apart, fall down, and then I can take the control arm off and remove the bolts. I gave it like three or four hits with the hammer, came right out. So that's it, I don't wanna just sit that off to the side like so, everything's okay. Honestly, I loosened the bolts like one or two turns, nothing crazy. It does have a decent amount of play in it, and I could tell the bushing on that side, on the passenger side back there, was ripped. Um, so we'll see. I think now you can maybe see the dry rot in there. So, whatever. I hope this takes care of some of my noises and alignment. Another update here. A little tough to get that nut off. No pun intended in that hole there without a magnet or something like that. So if you don't feel like it, I just unplug this. The coolant sensor, there's a 10 millimeter nut right there that holds the coolant reservoir on. Put that there. This thing should lift right up. Come out of the way, which it does. What the hell was that noise? Excuse my language. Uh, some yellow thing. What the hell is this? Oh, this is probably something discontinued, obsolete. It's me $30 at the dealer. Well, whatever. We'll figure that out later. Anyways, moving this out of the way, and now you can get right to the nut. And just hold this off to the side. Uh, it's one of the whatever. Plastic. I have the open-ended end of the wrench wedged on the nut there. It's resting against the steering shaft. Again, these were pretty loose since it was worn. So I didn't have to go crazy trying to remove it or torque it or do anything nuts like that. 
these have a double swivel to them as well. Let me see, it locks. It's probably stuck. Of course. This is always always good when you're trying to show somebody something. Isn't that nice? But anyways, this locks and on there it goes. Locks and unlocks and the head swivels. This is helpful in this instance on this truck to do this. So and then you can just lock it into place and it won't move. These are husky Home Depot jobs. But swivels the bolt slips right out behind the strut so you don't have to worry about it it's longer than you know necessary but it comes right out again sorry to any master mechanics that this is painful but i'm gonna get my hand back get that out of here make sure my wrench is still hanging out here yep which it is all right just got the nut out from the back get it as loose as possible and then just do it completely by feel you're just gonna have to stick your hand in back here kind of bend it and you'll feel the end of the nut and just twist it off and then you're good to roll there I got this end out just gonna have to unthread it a little bit by hand to be in there. There we go. and that's it there's the bolt right out Reuse that hardware. Here's my control arm. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's bad. And to the old scrap pile she goes. We'll get the new one put in. And the dad mobile will be ready once again. As an aside, because I have ADD, I'm going to be selling my random collection of W210 E55s, but the old girl has a dead battery, so I'm charging it to 82 280 SE with an M104 2.8 straight 6, which we never got here in the States. It's a German car that was brought over to California in 2001, Ronal wheels, BBS body kit just cool so I'm gonna take that out today because it's nice because the air is just eh in it and that's it so I will unbox this control arm I'll get it mounted and I'll just show the reverse process just so you guys can see it quick and then I'll button it up and go from there also if your ML has these lug nuts these are the flower style I bought the socket off Amazon it works just okay. It's not cut like perfectly for them. You can use a 17 millimeter socket to take these off, but they are prone to getting stripped like this one is a little bit. I hate these lug nuts. I don't I even know Mercedes use these on factory vehicles. I thought they were aftermarket, but don't buy them from the dealer. I bought a replacement single one. It's like 17 bucks, so they're not cheap. But again, nothing about owning a Mercedes is ever cheap. So I'm not complaining, everything's good. All right, the nuts are on, it is not tight, it is just hand tight. Before I do that, I do wanna walk this arm here onto this other arm and then put the nut through. Sorry, can't really see it, I'm trying to do this one-handed. I don't have all these selfie sticks and studios and all this other nonsense these guys buy. This is just for fun. <laughs> all right, put the old nut on there that it comes with. This is a new, nylock style nut so the blue stuff will come through once you tighten it and it looks like they updated this design because it's probably a little bit cheaper than factory to a regular allen so you may not want to use this torque style bit again so you don't strip the hole so i'm going to change to an allen i will tighten this down and then you're going to walk this back up take the nut off here obviously put the bolt through that hole and then tighten it down on the other side don't forget to tighten your nut here and your nut here on the underhood style. Underhood style, Jesus Lord. On the underhood side of the truck, put my wheel back on with these crappy lug nuts, and then I will be on my way. All in all, this has probably taken me, I don't know, 40 minutes tops, including taking the wheel off, which took me about 10 minutes because these lug nuts keep getting stuck to the 
socket so I mean if you have regular lug nuts and you have some talent I don't see why you couldn't do this in about half an hour all right new one push right in you have to use a little bit of force because obviously the bushings are new um, once you get the whole semi lined up just start sticking the bolt through it and just jiggle it a little bit until the bolt pushes all the way through do the same for the other side now that that part is done come around to here again gently remove this up out of the way you can put the nut on the bolt there put the nut on the bolt on the back side there and then begin to tor torque it down or just use the CP values good and tight all right, got the wheel back on, everything's tightened up. I'm gonna lower the truck now, it should fall on its face. Take it for a quick ride, see what happens. Yep, there you go. Floor jack is stuck. Oh, bro, I wish I could drive it like this. Stance fitment, oh. No, we don't do that here. Stock, stock children. Stock is great. I mean, it doesn't even look good. These wheels are take it or leave it to begin with. But. Don't open the door too far, you will hit the floor jack and dent your door. Just to add a little insult to injury. Um, my expectations on this first drive are not going to be anything crazy. Compressor's working it. Work it, girl. Work it. Work it. Work it. Nice and quiet, sounds like a typewriter. But we will take it apart and do all the maintenance anyways. Okay. Oh yeah. Check engine lights on for a math code because I messed with the air boxes, so please ignore that. Turn this off, some copyright laws. Yes, I have a cheese dash rug. I hate to do it, but Thing sits outside most of the time and I don't want the leather on the dash to peel up it already started to lift in a little spot so that's kind of stuff bothers me so just keep it nice I live on a dirt road I don't hear anything it sounds good again I'm not expecting my wheel to be straight but we'll see what happens at speed here. I'm going to make a video on what I do love and hate about this truck. But I am going to touch on one thing. The door mirrors on this truck are absolutely horrendous. You go, ah, you can see out the back. No, you can't. There's a car right next to you. You have no freaking idea. I've almost sideswiped 30 people on 95, so I look like your typical Florida driver, you know? It's brutal. No way. That fixed my problem. No, it didn't. Hang on. Eh, it's not as bad. Off-centered. So I'll take that. But yeah, definitely going to go for alignment. Put my seatbelt on. But I had a feeling this was a cop. I don't think it is. Truck for sale, actually. There's a school zone here, so we have to go as fast as possible. trucks have great grunt I always drive in comfort mode so it starts off in second try to keep my foot out of it it gets like a 8 to 14 miles per gallon depending on how I drive it so if I drive in comfort all the time I usually get 14 again I don't go far I'm not trying to be a cheapie but we always care about gas especially when it's four bones a gallon for super all right well thanks everyone for watching sorry if I put anybody to sleep have a good one.